Columbus is someone who means a great deal to the Italian Americans of New York City. Uh, we are concerned about preserving his legacy. We acknowledge the faults that he may have had, but we are asking the public to judge him through the lens of the era in which he lives. We're asking the mayor and city council speaker to judge the legacy he leaves for Italian Americans in New York City, and we're asking both of them to remove Christopher Columbus from consideration for this, for this list. All right, that was New York City Councilman, I guess, uh, frequently on the show. And again today, uh, Joe Borelli there with Joe Pisco and others fighting to keep a Christopher Columbus statue uh, there uh, to New York City Minority Whip Joe Borelli and former Obama campaign staffer Andrew Feldman. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Yep. You were there arguing not just as an Italian American, but that uh, you were essentially saying this is going too far. Yeah. Right? Look, I was there as a New Yorker, and I think we should put this in context. There was a rally that, that I hosted with our friend Joe Piscopo yesterday about Christopher Columbus. He has very deep roots in the New York community. There was another rally just down the block by some Democratic Dominican colleagues who were protesting the removal of uh, Juan Pablo Duarte, who is the, uh, one of the founding fathers of the Dominican Republic. De Blasio and others are forcing modern day people to re engage in 400, 200, 300 year old battles, uh, and it's, it's making us become more tribal than we've ever been before. I, I think we have to acknowledge where this started from. There was sort of a rational conversation over the legacy of the Civil War and how we memorialize the Confederacy and Reconstruction. Right. Then Trump said, uh, who's next? And the media instantly downplayed and, and, and just disapproved of the fact that he even asked that. Not 12 well, hours later. I think the later. disapproval was more about equating the two groups that were protesting. But, but, but not even 12 hours later, you had people on television, you had elected officials validating what he said by calling for Washington and Jefferson. Okay. Here, here it was Columbus. All right. Well, Andrew, what about, you know, I, I'm just wondering, where does it stop? Because I thought the jump the shark moment was yesterday with ESPN and this Robert Lee broadcaster. It's gotten a little ridiculous, hasn't it? Look, I think Christopher Columbus is probably crossing the line here, right? I think we should be focused on the Confederacy, Robert E. Lee. I think that is a focus here. Because remember, Robert E. Lee didn't even want statues of himself or the Civil War to be memorialized. He said we need, you know, shortly. So why now? Did you do you agree with or just eradicate his memory of statues, no, no, universities I, I, named I, after him and Jefferson Day and all of that? That's, that's, no. I mean, I think that this is part of history. And I agree with the president when he says that. But guess what? History should be taught and should be remembered in a museum. But how can it be remembered if people don't go to those museums? They want to be reminded in a park. No, it's not, it's not a place for a public land. It's not a place for a public what place. What if you populate the park with people statues will go, of Martin Luther will, King or Arthur Ashe or they, even Barack Obama? That's what Richmond Virginia com did. Completely different, completely different. Barack Obama it was not someone, it's not someone who advocated the oppression of our people. No, but my point is, and others have raised this as well, you've probably heard, that the reminder of how far African Americans, for example, have come since those times, since these generals of Randall are progressive. Sure, but let me, let me also remind you of this, that these statues were not erected right after the Civil War. That. Right? This, this why is it an issue now, is what I'm saying. Because tensions in our country have reached a point where our president so you could have is, removed them in the late 50s well and they were, and, well they and they have been let's let's remind ourselves that they have been removed in places across the country uh you know over the years and there hasn't been this big uproar right because Local municipalities chose to do what they but chose to do. But others didn't, right? Others didn't. So uh, wh where do you see this going? Because I think to your, both your point, you agree on this much, you can go a little too far with this stuff. But uh, when I've had African-American guests on, they always say, well, isn't the bigger issue how we're treating people today? And isn't the educational value in seeing how far we've come from that point? Right, and, and these people need to be put in context of their era and not in the modern era. And, and to your question that, that you asked, Andrew, th th what happened now is Trump derangement syndrome. And we really see that with Nancy Pelosi, where all of a sudden she decided that these statues have to come out of the Capitol. A, a story just broke today that it was her father who dedicated these Confederate monuments in Baltimore. I, I, look, well, to I don't, be fair to her, I mean, that was her father, and that was 1948. My, my only point was... She's been walking by these statues in the Capitol for decades now. It's become right, an issue because, now. And, and that's no, my point. Neil, there's it, it a is, point. It, there's nothing else more evident that people are imperfect. Look at where our look country at Nancy is Pelosi. right now. Look at what's going on in our streets. Look at what has been going on for years. We've reached a point where this, I think, needs to happen to create healing. I honestly believe that. You don't well, think have, there's an agenda item here, maybe not to no. you, that a lot of people say the more we deflect and get into this thing, the more unlikely it is that 
this president can make progress. No, on I don't any. think this is about the president. The more his he has. I'm not to, saying you, but no, I do but see no, a lot no, of because people. Because the president, who, I don't agree with that, Neil. Because the president can't even get along, or you know, with his own party, with Mitch McConnell to get things done, right? If he could talk to you, don't Mitch think McConnell, this is at all an overreaction. This is not an overreaction. No, I say Christopher Columbus is an overreaction, right? Don't but, say that just because we're Italian American. No, right. I'm not. I'm not. Look, but I got to ask you this, and I honestly was thinking this. My grandparents are Holocaust survivors. Okay, my grandparents came over. Over here, welcomed into this country after surviving Nazi Germany, and now we're having this debate about what kind of America do we want? What are do we on our values to be? you think the president's anti-Semitic when he has so many I, I don't prominent think, Jewish financiers in his administration and at Trump Tower? I have been very concerned about the president's reaction. How about, I'm not going to. But if he were a bigot in that regard, then he wouldn't have any single Jew in his cabinet and in, 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 in his business dealings, right? But how about Look, the I'm point not of money? That. I don't know what he's saying to Jared. But Kushner if he were a bigot, if he were bigot, you, but wait a minute, if he were a bigot, then, 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 then he, he Cohn, wouldn't be any he, close to it. Gary Cohn is, is is Jewish and is head of his National Economic Council. Okay? Right. Stephen he, Nation is his treasurer. Okay, but Jared and did you see what came out today? That Jared Gary Kushner Cohn is his son-in-law. Yeah, and we haven't heard from Jared Kushner. And Gary Cohn said he was very he drafted his resignation lever after Charlottesville. Let me ask you this. And why do you think the president refused it? I think the president should feel ashamed, and maybe he does. Maybe he apologized. But if to Gary he, Cohen. if he were anti-Semitic, he would, he would just happily take it, right? Look, I, I'm not going to sit here today and tell you the president's anti-Semitic. I think he's had and some very, and I, 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 I think he's had some very concerning comments. And I also got to ask you this about these comments, right? Have you guys been to Germany? Yes. Right. I've been to Germany. I've been to Berlin last year. When we go to Berlin, we don't see statues of, of. Nazi soldiers or Hitler. No, Those are in museums. Well, you're not they equating that you with the Confederate. No, well, I am but telling you, he, he brought it up is. the Holocaust, and I've been to Poland in Auschwitz. And you know what? And they those didn't, are museums. You know what, but you know what they didn't do to Auschwitz? They didn't remove it. They left it up as a reminder. As a museum. The experience was more powerful. But you both agree we've gotten a little extreme. Oh, it's it's All Trump right. derangement syndrome. All right. Well. Hopefully we'll get over this one way or the other. I don't know, <laughs> gentlemen. I, seriously, I want to thank you. I, I want to thank you, Walden.